In this video, let us learn how to create multiple red users in our JavaScript application. In the last video, we understood the requirement. Our shop now needs to sell both cakes and ice creams. And we decided that we would have two shopkeepers, one each for managing cakes and ice creams. When it comes to code, the shopkeeper is nothing but the red user. When we talk about having two shopkeepers, it translates to having two red users in our code. If we quickly take a look, we can see that we have one red user. The default value for the state parameter is the initial state and it also accepts an action. Based on the two parameters, the new state, which is the updated number of cakes, is returned. Now what is required is to implement another red user that does pretty much the same. Before we implement that though, I also want to show you how to work with a single red user. On the initial state object, I'm going to add another property, number of ice creams, and set it to 20. Next, in the red user, I will add another switch case, which is buy ice cream. So I'm going to copy this case and change it to buy ice cream. And we are going to return number of ice creams state dot number of ice creams minus one. Now let's define our action and action creator to buy an ice cream. At the top, const buy ice cream is equal to buy ice cream and then the action creator function buy ice cream we're going to return an object with a type property set to buy ice cream finally let's dispatch an action to buy some ice creams so store.dispatch but this time you're going to buy ice creams so three dispatches to buy cake and two dispatches to buy ice creams. Let's save this and test it out. I'm going to open the terminal and run the command node index. And you can see the log statements. When we buy a cake, only the number of cakes goes down. The number of ice creams remain the same. And when we buy an ice cream, only the number of ice creams goes down and the number of cakes remain the same. Now this approach of using just one reducer definitely works. But in the long run, when we have several products to sell, it just becomes this one huge function that would be difficult to debug, manage and keep track of. So now let me show you the other approach of using multiple reducers. What we are going to do is basically split our state and the red user. So instead of having one object for the initial state, we are now going to have two. Const initial cake state is going to be an object where we only maintain number of cakes. This is 10. And then const initial ice cream state is going to be an object where we only keep track of number of ice creams, 20. Similarly, we are going to split our reducer into two. I will copy the existing reducer and make the necessary changes. Reducer is going to be cake reducer and the default value will be the initial cake state. I will also get rid of the switch case for buying an ice cream. Similarly, we are going to create our ice cream reducer as well. Again, I'm going to paste the original reducer function, change the name to ice cream reducer, change the state to initial ice cream state, and then remove the buy cake switch case. Finally, I'm going to comment out the old state 
and the reducer. And you can see that our reducer functions are much simpler now. The cake reducer is only bothered about the cake state and the logic to update the cake state. It has nothing to do with ice creams. Similarly, the ice cream reducer is only bothered about the ice cream state and the logic to update the ice cream state. It has nothing to do with cakes. At this point, everything is going well, but when we take a look at our create store function, we see that there is a problem. The create store method can accept only one reducer. So how do we let Redux know about both our reducers? Let's take a look at that in the next video.